The First Minister has ended the SNP's power-sharing deal with the Scottish Green Party. The move follows the government's decision to scrap climate targets and a pause on the prescription of puberty blockers for under-18s. The Conservatives have said they will hold a vote of no confidence in First Minister Hamza Yousaf. That could come as early as next week and Mr Yousaf is facing calls to hold an election. The SNP is now a minority government and will need to win the support of opposition MSPs to get its program of government approved by the Scottish Parliament. The SNP holds 63 of the 129 seats at Holyrood, too short of an overall majority. The Greens have 7, the Scottish Conservatives 31 and Labour 22. The former SNP member Ash Reagan now sits as an Alba Party MSP. The presiding officer of the parliament would be expected to back the status quo in the event of a tied vote. The end of the Butte House Agreement began with an early morning meeting between Mr Yousaf and the co-leaders of the Scottish Green Party, Patrick Harvey and Lorna Slater. They were seen walking out of Butte House, the first minister's official residence in Edinburgh, before an emergency cabinet meeting. First Minister Hamza Yousaf said he had formally notified Ms. Slater and Mr. Harvey that the agreement, which was signed by the two parties following the Holyrood election in 2021, had been terminated. The two Green politicians immediately left their junior ministerial posts, which they held in return for their party's support for the SNP-led government. The Greens later said the SNP had sold out future generations. At a press conference later in Butte House, Mr. Yousaf said he had thanked his former colleagues for their contribution to the Scottish government and made it clear the SNP intended to work with the Greens where we can and in the national interest. The Butte House Agreement was intended to provide stability to the Scottish government and it has made possible a number of achievements, he said. But it has served its purpose, it is no longer guaranteeing a stable arrangement in Parliament. The events of recent days have made that clear and therefore, after careful consideration I believe that going forward it is in the best interest of the people of Scotland to pursue a different arrangement. The news that the agreement was being scrapped came days after the Greens announced that party members would be given a vote in the coming weeks on whether they should remain in power with the SNP. Mr Harvey had previously said he would quit as co-leader if the party voted to end the agreement, but on Thursday he said his position was a discussion for another day. In a strongly worded statement, Ms. Slater described the ending of the Butte House Agreement as an act of political cowardice by the SNP and accused the party of selling out future generations. She also said she was confident Green members would have supported the party staying in government if the vote had happened. She said, neither they nor SNP members will have that opportunity. Instead, the most reactionary and backwards-looking forces within the First Minister's party have forced him to do the opposite of what he himself had said was in Scotland's best interests. By contrast, we as co-leaders of the Scottish Greens were prepared to put our own political careers on the line with our members to defend our achievements in government, despite enduring all that SNP backbenchers and others threw against us. The relationship between the two parties came to a head in the wake of the SNP Energy Secretary Mary McAllen's announcement last week that Scotland's target of cutting carbon emissions by 75% by 2030 compared to 1990 levels was out of reach and would be scrapped. That sparked anger from many grassroots Green members. Scotland's NHS also said it was pausing prescribing puberty blockers to under-18s referred by the country's only specialist clinic following a report by Dr. Hilary Cass. Mr. Harvey said there was distress in the party over the move and that young trans people may now not get access to the treatment they need. The first minister said on Saturday that he valued the power-sharing deal with the Greens, adding, I think we've achieved a lot together in government. I want to keep achieving a lot. When asked whether he could soon be leading a minority government soon, Mr. Yousaf had replied, I don't think that will be the case. Speaking at First Minister's questions on Thursday, Green MSBS sat quietly with their heads bowed as Mr Yousaf defended the record of the two parties in government. Scottish Conservative leader Douglas Ross accused the First Minister of panicking before the extreme Greens could dump him, and said he was lodging a vote of no confidence in the First Minister. It is not yet known whether the Greens will back Mr Ross in the no confidence vote, which would not be held until next week at the earliest. Mr Ross said Mr Yousaf had abandoned the platform he stood on, adding. He claims it is now a new beginning, but really it's the beginning of the end. Isn't Hamza Yousaf a lame duck first minister? 
Scottish Labour leader Anna Sarwar said it was time to end this circus and called for an election. He said, The challenges facing our country have never been so great, but Scotland's government has never been so poor and its leadership has never been so weak. The people of Scotland can see the SNP have lost their way, weak, divided, and incompetent. Putting party before country, the Scottish Liberal Democrats have also said they want an election. Mr. Harvey told the Parliament that the SNP could no longer rely on Green votes in Parliament and asked Mr. Yousaf who he thought he had most pleased. Mr. Ross, SNP rebel Fergus Ewing or Alex Salmond, the former SNP leader and First Minister who now leads the ALBA party. He said, which of them does he think he can rely on for a majority in Parliament now? Former SNP leadership candidate Kate Forbes, a vocal critic of the SNP Greens partnership, said on X, formerly Twitter, that she believed the government is most effective when its priorities match the public's and that the SNP is most electable as a broad tent representative of the nation. She added, amidst all the differing views in the SNP about this decision on the Butte House Agreement by the FM, some delighted and others gutted, it is worth recalling our core objectives to serve Scotland's people, end inequality, eradicate poverty, govern well, and pursue prosperity, like other indie nations. SNP MP Joanna Cherry, another critic of the Butte House Agreement, said the ending of the deal was a huge opportunity to reset the SNP's agenda and government. She posted on X, out with identity politics and virtue signaling. In with P.